In a perfectly elastic collision, the kinetic energy of the system is conserved. This, however, rarely happens on the macroscopic scale. In most instances where the total energy is conserved, it might not necessarily be kinetic energy. We've seen how easily energy is transferred from type to type, so it shouldn't be too surprising that energy can be lost from a system in the form of heat, light, and or sound. In most cases, the total kinetic energy of a system is less after a collision than the kinetic energy before. This can also happen in reverse, though. Explosions, for example, convert potential energy into kinetic energy. So the total kinetic energy after the collision in this case would be more than before. But either way, kinetic energy is not conserved. Take two blocks of equal mass and move them towards each other at the same speed. The total initial momentum is still the momentum of each block added together. In this case, the velocities are in opposite directions, so the total momentum is equal to zero. After the collision, the two blocks stick together and come to a stop. Since there is no motion, there is no kinetic energy associated with our blocks. This is what we call a perfectly inelastic collision. Momentum is conserved, but internal kinetic energy is not. As an example, let's say we have a 10,000 kilogram railroad car. It travels at a speed 24 meters per second and strikes an identical car that is at rest. If the two cars stick together after the collision, how much of the initial kinetic energy is lost? Since the collision was inelastic, we know that the kinetic energy was lost during the collision. We can also determine exactly how much. Now the total kinetic energy before the collision is equal to the total kinetic energy after the collision plus the amount of whatever other energy there is. Before the collision, only car A is moving. So our total kinetic energy is 2.88 times 10 to the sixth joules. After the collision, both cars are moving. Since they are both the same mass and momentum must be conserved, we can say that they are moving at half the original speed of car A. So after the collision, there is 1.44 times 10 to the sixth joules of kinetic energy. Transformed energy is simply delta Ke, or the change in kinetic energy. So the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy gives us a loss of 1.44 times 10 to the sixth joules of energy. As another example, find the recoil velocity of a 70 kilogram goalie, originally at rest, who catches a 0.150 kilogram hockey puck traveling at a velocity of 35 meters per second. Now we're on ice, so we can assume that ice is a frictionless surface, and we do not lose any energy to friction. And when in doubt, start with the conservation of momentum. In this case, the initial momentum of the goalie is zero because he's not moving. So rewriting in terms we can work with gives us the initial momentum all coming from the puck equal to the final momentum of the puck plus any momentum transferred to the goalie. Since the goalie catches the puck, we can assume it is stuck to him and they are moving as one unit. If this is true, we can make this a little easier by saying that the velocity of the puck and the velocity of the goalie are the same after the collision. This is actually what we're looking for, so moving a few terms around, we can get it by itself. A little bit of math, and we find the recoil velocity of 0.0748 meters per second. Now, if you think about this situation, that small velocity makes a lot of sense. The goalie is large enough compared to the puck that he's not going to be moving very fast because of the puck's impact. Now since the collision was inelastic, we know that kinetic energy was lost during this collision. We can also determine exactly how much. Total kinetic energy before the collision is equal to the total kinetic energy after the collision plus some other energy. And so to figure this out, we must first determine how much kinetic energy there was to start with. Again, the goalie is at rest, so the only kinetic energy initially comes from the puck, giving us an initial total kinetic energy of 91.9 joules. We found the velocity of the system after the collision to be 0.0748 meters per second, and the combined mass of the system to be 70.15 kilograms. From here, our final kinetic energy is 0.196 joules. Change in kinetic energy is final minus initial, so subtracting our initial kinetic energy from our final kinetic energy gives us a negative 91.7 joules. Again, this answer makes sense if you think about the object with a high velocity coming to mostly a stop. We are going to have lost most of that kinetic energy.